Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth a royal diadem and crown him. And crown him, Lord of all. Extol him in whose path you trod, and crown him, Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you once again as we celebrate the Eucharist together. Let's begin, as we always do, by opening our hearts to the transformative power of God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasped, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, given you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, 
people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to be God. To God.
My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Are you not concerned with any, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a practice in the Hebrew scriptures of looking back on the great things that God has done. In times of trial, the people of Israel would look back to God's faithfulness at other times in their community's existence when they had been experiencing great trials and in retrospect are able to see God's faithfulness in a way that was not as easy to do at the time. One example that is quoted here in Psalm 106 is God's, the people of Israel looking back on God's deliverance of them from slavery in Egypt. And God led Israel from their midst, for His mercy endures forever. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, His mercy endures forever. Who split into the Red Sea, for His mercy endures forever. Who led the people through the desert, for His mercy endures endures forever. This spiritual practice of looking back at God's action in our lives is an important thing to do and can be very fruitful both in our own personal prayer lives as well as in the life of a community. Understanding God's faithfulness in the past and realizing in challenging circumstances in the present that God truly is with us and ever faithful. So I'm going to look back a little bit on the life of our community here at St. John and St. Paul over the past year. Going back to September, we began with a bang. After the little bit of a lull over the summer months, things got into full swing in September with our second annual outdoor mass with nearly a thousand people gathered at the Wellesley High School football field. It was a celebration full of joy with music ministries each of the music ministries from both parishes represented. People then gathered afterwards for a ministry fair, enjoying food together, enjoying each other's company, and finding out different ways that they could participate in the life of the parishes and collaborative, uh, both through service and also through spiritual enrichment. The fall continued on with our Uh, our 5 p.m. youth mass on Sunday evenings where we were packing both churches with nearly 400 people, with the kids involved in all of the ministries, more than 20 of them playing instruments and singing, involved as Eucharistic ministers and lectors, greeters. We were on a roll. Things were going beautifully. Christmas wish at St. John's and giving tree at St. Paul's, serving hundreds of needy families and children. So much had been happening. And then on March 14th, the weekend of March 14th and 15th, the unthinkable happened and things seemed to come to a crashing halt. Because of the global pandemic, we needed to close the church that weekend. We thought at that time it might last a week, might last two, never imagining that it could possibly last for months. But our parishes and collaborative did not stop at that point, 
but rather adapted to the circumstances we faced. We immediately developed a robust online uh, uh, presence, putting mass up online so that we could be together even apart, with you sitting in your living rooms drinking coffee in your pajamas and us here recording the mass, a way of being together at a time when it was impossible to be together physically. My superstar staff went to town on, on doing daily entries, spiritual entries in a blog, <clears throat> putting, up, putting up videos and, and inspirational music, leading the rosary, leading Bible studies and faith-sharing groups. Our RCIA group continued to meet remotely via Zoom. So much continued to go on. And then, as we were allowed to resume in a limited way public masses, we have been, been celebrating what I call our own Tanglewood East with our outdoor masses, both at St. Paul's and at St. John's. Service ministries have continued to thrive. Our St. Vincent de Paul Society has been busier than ever in helping the needy among us. Amazing volunteers from both parishes and our service committee have been ministering to the Rwandan refugee family whom we are sponsoring under very difficult circumstances, but providing both in-person and remote support to get this family settled in these very challenging times. The life of our parishes and the life of our collaborative looks very different from the way that it looked six months ago. And yet, we are continuing to thrive because of your generosity, your care, and your commitment. This weekend, we are launching our annual appeal, both at St. John Parish and at St. Paul Parish. In normal years, I would be introducing these appeals separately at each parish. But as we know, this is far from a normal year. I need to make clear that, as has always been, St. John's and St. Paul's are individual, separate parishes, so have their own finances. The reason that the appeals are usually done separately is that each parish has its own strengths and challenges financially. But ye this year, the overwhelming picture is the same. We can't look into a crystal ball and know when we are going to be able to return to Mass at full capacity. In the meantime, not having a regular offertory collection has severely impacted our ability to have a balanced budget and our income is, very, is down very significantly, both at St. Paul's and at St. John's for the first quarter of the fiscal year. So your response to the annual appeal this year is more important than it has ever been. Next week, you should be receiving in the mail uh, a package that looks like this, St. Paul parishioners and St. John parishioners, respectively. I'd ask that you prayerfully consider your contribution to the annual appeal this year, knowing that the parishes really need your support more than ever in order to continue to minister and to thrive in these very challenging circumstances. I want to close with a selection from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Paul was expressing his gratitude to the Thessalonians for their faithfulness. And I was reading, as I was reading this, it seemed to me that my words as a pastor to you are very much echoed by these words. I continue to be inspired every day by your faith, by your commitment, by your care for the needy, by your willingness to go the extra mile, by your prayerfulness, by the way that you are raising your children in faith. And I want to make Paul's words my own. I give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in my prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. Yes, how you were chosen. 
and how you beautifully live your faith. It is my great honor and privilege to be your pastor, and I appreciate all that you give to St. Paul, all that you give to St. John, and appreciate your generous support in every way that allows our parishes to be the beautiful and vibrant communities of faith that they are, thanks to you. Now together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord alone is our King. His kingdom is not of this world, but His kingdom begins with the church. Turning to our just and merciful God, we present him with all our intentions as we pray. For the church, that she would exemplify leadership that would inspire a renewed love for Christ himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. John St. Paul Collaborative, in thanksgiving for our ongoing blessings as a community of faith, and in anticipation of a successful outcome to our annual appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our elected officials, that care for the common good would be at the forefront of their every decision. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an eradication of both blatant and subversive forms of racism, may we all hunger, thirst, and advocate for racial equality. May we all condemn attitudes and practices which are directly contrary to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increased respect for the protection of life at every stage, from conception through a dignified life regardless of economic circumstance to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, we owe you all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength offered as a living sacrifice of love. Help us discern where you would have us use the generous gifts you have given us for the glory of your name. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shelter me, O God, hide me in the shadow of your Oh, 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh, uh-huh. 
Oh, oh, oh. 